everyone, thank you for tuning in. I am your instructor Joy. This video will be an answer to a sub subscriber, actually a long time faithful subscriber. Thank you very much. So this violinist was wondering about a proper or good daily practicing routine or daily practice structure that one could follow approximately one hour a day and so on. Thank you very much for your question and thank you all for your kind support. Uh, send me donations, booking lessons with me, and they're always writing nice comments. I really, really appreciate. I also encourage you to check out my Patreon page, which you can find in the description below. I'll be posting another video every Thursdays. So, when it comes to practice, we know that we have to do it. But we also know that efficient practice or quality practice matters a lot. But often, a lot of students are left alone when it comes to uh, planning their practice and sometimes they put a lot of many many hours and then and they're not quite getting there and get frustrated and then I was there too so uh, I'm gonna show you a little general guidance and then also give you a little ideas when it comes to beginner and intermediate level players of specific techniques that I expect my students to have so now number one quality more quality than quantity it's not about how many hours or how many days we, we were in the practicing room or sweating. It's about all quality. When I say quality, it means not only having an efficient practicing time itself, but having quality mindset, quality physical state, meaning make sure your body's not overly tired. You're about to start practicing, but you feel sore here, or you, you feel like your brain is a little foggy, a little slow. Then. See if you can go for a walk or if you can take a nap, see if you can improve your, your physical or emotional state a little better so that once you start practicing, it, the time can be well spent, most efficient way. Number two, proper planning. Um, I have to admit, sometimes I just jump in too and that happens too, but I always see a huge difference when I plan my practice, what I'm gonna do, versus when I just started it. When I plan my practice ahead of time and then organize what I'm gonna do first in the order that I think is right for that moment, then I can really use every single minute most efficiently and bring the most out of it versus I just start playing and then I'm having a little fun, I play a little this and that. And it's fine having fun. It, we want to have fun too, but we're talking about having a good, efficient practicing routine so that we can we can make the most out of it. Most of us have not so much time left and we're trying to make the best out of it. So if you want to make the best out of your practicing time, you want to organize or plan your practicing. The order or the amount of time approximately. Of course, you can always be flexible as you, as you start practicing. You can adjust a little, but just having a general guidance can can be a very helpful. So I'm gonna tell you um, general ideas of planning and the more personalized. Uh, when it comes to like uh, generally speaking, remember it's generally speaking. Yes, it may or may not work for you, but generally speaking, I like 40, 60 percent proportion, which means scales, technical studies such as etude, about 40 percent of your practicing time and about repertoire and the concert pieces you're going to play about 60% of time. So if you're planning to practice one hour, you, sh you should spend about 20 to 25 minutes into scales and study etude pieces. And then about 35 or 40 minutes you want to spend um, with your repertoire pieces. But um, again, it, some people need more work on the technical aspects, some, sometimes even the same violinist, we, one day we need more work with the techniques and then the next we need more, more work with our concert pieces. So that, that varies. And that's when the personalized practicing plan becomes very handy. Um, sometimes, uh, often, if we can have a professional uh, help with a professional instructor, just guiding you, helping you to organize or prioritize your needs, that can be helpful. But in general, what I normally um, encourage my students to do is about spending 10% of your practice time at the beginning of the practicing session to warm up. 
warming up is not only just playing um, scales, but also warming up your brain, right? So let's say you just got up, or you had just breakfast and you want to start practicing. Um, and then remember, if our body was in, in bed for entire night, many, many hours, and our brain was inactive in, entire night. So in those warm up, not only we're warming up our valine and left and right hand, but also we're warming up our brain. Now, after warming up, I like to sit down and organize my practicing order. So based on the previous day or based on the recent practicing or recent performance, you have to categorize um, the small sections of practicing parts that you need. I'm not talking about from beginning to the end. I'm not talking about repertoire piece A, repertoire piece B, repertoire piece C, and so on. I'm talking more about small sections, small snippets, small, can be two, three bars, or sometimes six bars, but more small sections. You should have circled those uh, in your previous per practicing or performances, those sections that it's not as good, not that needs a little more work. Now, those sections, you need to start categorizing. The hardest part, the, 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 the part that needs the most practicing should be priority number one. The second hardest one, priority number two. The easiest part being priority whatever at the end, yeah, or for fun playing. And after warming up, you start practicing the hardest part that needs the most practicing, yeah. Um, now, now when it comes, this subscriber was wondering also if I could give some ideas of um, studies and repertoire pieces and so on. I mean, that has a lot to say, of course, but to just make into one video, I'm going to just mention quickly a couple of things. When it comes to beginner violinists, I expect uh, for my beginner students to be able to play one or two octave scales in the first position here, meaning you should be able to um, uh, place your left hand healthy way and then be able to use all four fingers. We first start with the first, second and third, but ultimately you should be introduced to pinky as well. And I'm also expecting my beginner students to be able to produce nice tone, meaning be able to catch, um, keep the bow in a certain point, keeping the bow in a certain contact point. Contact point is where the hair is touching the string. So often you hear lots of keep the bow parallel to the bridge like that. So be able to produce nice tone. And that's a very, very important start. That, that's what I expect from my beginner students. Um, when it comes to specific technique, I'm, I want my beginner students to be able to play detache or uh, staccato, martelli, and so on. And also to be able to do a little string crossing when I slur or separate it. Yeah? So as you can see, slur is one of the technique as well. Now, when it comes to great technical study for beginners, if they are shredding, it's fantastic, fantastic study. Subject techniques for both right hand and left hand um, bowing technique and then techniques in general, great idea. Kaiser study is great. Wolfart is great. Kreutzer, it can be a little hard, but when you, at the end of the beginner, um, if you are not completely beginner, a Kreutzer study can be a good start as well. Now, when it comes to repertoire pieces for beginner, I want pieces that involve such technique, either staccato involves like or some kind of um, if if it involves a little more eighth and sixteenth note, that would be even better. So basically, combination of different rhythm, long and short rhythm, so that we can we know how to alternate. When it comes to intermediate um, violinists. I expect my in intermediate students to be able to play two or three octave scale, meaning I want uh, my students to be able to go all the way to the third position and sometimes even the fourth position. That means you should, in the intermediate intermediate player, should have learned how to shift as well from first to third or first to the fourth position. So let me try again. Yeah, so those one would be good. Fourth is not a must, but third position you must have uh, mastered in the, when you're in an intermediate level. Now, when it comes to um, technique and the right tech, right hand technique, kule is something that I expect my intermediate students to play. Spiccato, tremolo, and sautier. Yeah, and 
and then left end I want my intermediate uh, violins to be able to vibrate glissando Glissando, uh, double stops of third six and trill um, when it comes to etudes study pieces Kreutzer is great Shradic still works very well Sevjik you want to involve a technique, subject, a bowing technique, and trill study, and you want to start uh, the preparatory study to double stops from a subject. Um, uh, Kreutzer, did I mention Kreutzer? It's great. Um, and also, Mazas study is great. It's spelled M A Z A S, Mazas, but I believe it's French, so probably have to say Maza, I don't know. <laughs> so, Mazas study is great. And Fiorillo can be slowly introduced, even though Fiorillo is more used for advanced player. Um, and don't study it, but preparatory study. That's um, that's a little a pre-step to the to the, the other. Don't study. So don't study preparatory. That would be great exercise. When it comes to repertoire pieces, of course, I want repertoire pieces for intermediate players to play. That involves all such technique. So high positions, double stops, and of course string crossings and extreme st string crossings. Um, this violinist was wondering about um, Bach double concerto. Bach double concerto, which is so. This would be more intermediate level player, definitely. Um, it's more. It's not super advanced intermediate player repertoire, but definitely it's intermediate player because it involves a lot of fast string crossings and then and the extreme string crossings. so you have to go extreme string crossings and then slur it in odd notes and odd numbers and so on yeah so um, I hope this gave you a lot of idea it, it's um I try to put as much information as possible in a one video so that you get an idea let me know how you find it if you want me to make more videos about it to uh, introduce you more specific pieces and repertoire pieces please let me know and i hope um this was helpful thank you for watching and hope to see you again bye bye